Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Green Pastures Tabernacle Church Midweek Program. My name is Abel, and we are so blessed to have you joining us tonight. Uh, we want to continue with our discussion. Thank you for sending in your questions. And with us in the studio to help us to answer uh, these questions is none other than our senior pastor, Bishop Stanley Malili. Karibu sana, Bishop. Thank you, Pastor. How are you? I'm very well. Good to have uh, you again. Thank you. Much appreciated. Amen. Yes. And so before we get into our discussion, uh, Bishop, would you mind just praying for us? Father, we thank you today and we pray that as we again discuss and take up questions that have been fronted by your children, that you help us not to speak from our own resources, but to speak from the wisdom that you have distilled upon us through the word and by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So thank you so much for your questions, and uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, I just want to encourage you, uh, please share this link with your family, uh, your friends, and your neighbors so that uh, we can get this word out uh, as much as, as we can. And so um, there is a question here, Bishop. Uh, someone is asking, uh, how should I handle dispute between... Uh, my wife and uh, number one father-in-law, mother-in-law, and siblings. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, it looks like, I hope this is not a hypothetical situation mm. because uh, I'm imagining if my wife has a problem with the mm. mother mm. and father mm. and then my own siblings, yes. then that can be a very difficult life yes. because sure. then... Uh, there are disputes everywhere. Yes. And I like the extended part of the question because mm. this person is saying, I mm. know that I need to defend her, mm. but this is my family too. So yes. there is some sort of being torn apart mm -hmm. between where to stand. Yes. Now, um, it's unfortunate when things are like this, mm. but disputes are part and part of life. Eh? Yes. And uh, they are not necessarily bad. The mm. fact that we are human mm. will be into disputes. Yes. Dispute simply means mm. we are not in agreement on certain issues. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's expected because human beings have their own minds. Yes. They are independent. Mm. We see things differently. Mm -hmm. And so in the process of living together, mm. there will be moments where we don't see things the same way yes. or we don't handle things the same way. Mm. And so those differences uh, can easily... Mm. Uh, precipitate into what uh, is being referred to as uh, as disputes. Yes. Now, what makes disputes bad is mm. just the way they are handled. How they are handled. How they are handled. Mm. The bottom line about disputes is not mm. whether they should be there or not, mm. because it would be very unrealistic to expect us not to have disputes, disputes yes. because even a husband and wife very close will have disputes. Mm -hmm. A mother and child will have disputes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the father and son will have disputes mm. because of the reasons that I gave earlier. Yes. So, first of all, it's important before you even go far mm. to establish the source of this, this dispute. Why is your wife mm. having a dispute with your mother-in-law mm -hmm. and your father-in-law mm -hmm. and your siblings? Mm. W what is the cause of this uh, dispute. Yes. And for me, I would say that if your wife is really the genesis of these disputes, mm. then ask her to politely take responsibility mm. and back down and mm -hmm. apologize. Mm. That's the beginning. Yes. Because there is no point of pushing a dispute if you are the one who is on the wrong. Mm. And I believe in every dispute, there usually will be always someone who is culpable. Yes. Either they are overstepping mm -hmm. or there is something they are not handling very well. Mm. And where close relatives are involved, yes. then I advise that it's important that uh, this brother finds a neutral party. Mm -hmm. This could be either an uncle to the wife mm -hmm. or an auntie or some close friends yes. to mediate. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is if you allow a dispute to continue between relatives mm -hmm. and there is no one who is respectful enough, mm -hmm. what tends to happen is can degenerate into a very bad wall of words yes. where you find even uh, your wife is talking back mm -hmm. to your to your father-in-law and mm -hmm. mother-in-law mm -hmm. or even hurling insults yes. to your siblings. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when it gets there, things mm -hmm. become very murky mm -hmm. and it is not good. Mm -hmm. And so I believe even for this lady who is having issues, Yes. She needs to be respectful to parents, mm. even if they are wrong. Mm. That's the beginning, especially mm. for parents. Mm. We need to be careful that even when we think our parents are wrong, even if we are disputing, mm. first of all, let's do it respectively. Mm -hmm. 
and they should not reprimand or even talk back at them. Mm. There are situations where you find a, a daughter talking back to the father or to the mother in mm. a very disrespectful way. Mm. In the church and the Christian circles, we yes. discourage that. Mm. And not just Christian, mm. but even socially speaking, uh, mature people will tell you it is never good yes. to speak back or raise your voice mm. when you're talking to somebody who is senior to you, either in terms of age mm. or whichever other way. Mm. Now, when it comes to siblings, or, 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 or before we get there, if, if this dispute between your wife and uh, your parents-in-law persists, mm. then I think the best way is to encourage your wife to really take some time out and stay away from her parents. Mm. Sometimes that becomes necessary. Mm -hmm. Distance as a way of giving people time to reflect yes. and uh, relook at issues. Mm. So when you are in dispute with somebody, if you keep meeting, mm -hmm. it tends to escalate. And especially if there are no constructive ways of handling it. Mm. So I sometimes think it's a good thing to call a truce. Yes. Even in, in normal fighting, uh -huh. truces yes. are called. Yeah, yeah. Where both, uh, both sides agree, let's hold our fire mm -hmm. for some time. Mm -hmm. Whatever they are doing when they are holding fire, either uh, normally negotiations uh -huh. are taking place mm. so that peace can be found. Mm. So in the same way, I would encourage someone to consider that. Mm. When it comes to siblings, yes. if, if, if your wife is having a dispute with your siblings, mm. I believe it is right for your wife not to directly confront your siblings. Mm. Do it yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what I mean. Mm. If, for example, my wife has, uh, uh, she's having war with my own brothers. Mm. It was, uh, would be advisable for her not to confront them mm. directly. Mm -hmm. And uh, she needs to allow you to do it. Okay. Because it is you who knows your brothers, mm. they respect you, you've grown up together. Mm -hmm. Because what tends to happen is sometimes if you do that, something wrong can go there. Yes. Either someone will speak bad mm -hmm. or someone can slap another one. Mm -hmm and you have a bigger problem mm. that is very difficult to deal with. Mm. And again, I also believe you, you, you should not allow your siblings mm. to confront your wife, even when there's a problem. Mm. If there is anything, they should come mm. and tell you, mm. not going directly to her. Wow. Because when somebody provokes your wife, even yes. if it's your sibling, mm. they are provoking you. Mm. <laughs> so they need to be careful about that. Yes. There are families where people think mm. just because a lady is married there, then anybody can have a say and tell them whatever they want to do. I don't believe that's correct. I believe your wife is your wife and she should be respected. So if people respect you, they should respect your wife. And I believe that people cannot respect me and disrespect my wife. People cannot shout at my wife and think they can not shout at me. So if you shout at my wife, what you're telling me is you can also shout at me, even if you are my younger brother. And that is not correct. So it is important then to let your siblings know that mm. they and your wife occupy two very unique positions in your life mm -hmm. and you cannot prefer either for the other. Mm -hmm. You know, when people put you at a place whereby you choose between your wife and them, mm. that becomes a very difficult mm. place because mm -hmm. your, your siblings can't be your mm -hmm. wife and your wife can be your siblings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they, both parties need to understand that yes. they all occupy a very unique position mm. and they are dealing with their dispute is to your advantage mm. because then you will continue to enjoy the blessings of both. Yes. But if now they can't see eye to eye and then you are supposed to have a good relationship with your wife mm. and good relationships with your brother, mm it is very difficult for you to do that. Mm -hmm. So if she is on the wrong, mm -hmm. I believe you need to support her publicly. Mm -hmm. But when you go home, mm -hmm. reprimand her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell her, I supported you there. But to be honest, mm -hmm. you are very wrong. Wow. And we need to agree how mm -hmm. you're going to, to, mm -hmm. to deal with this. That is if she is wrong. If she is but wrong. if she is right, stand mm -hmm. with her publicly mm -hmm. and stand with her privately. Wow. But if she is wrong, yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you support her publicly. <laughs> But when you go home, <laughs> tell her, by the way, let me tell you, I supported you there because yes. I didn't want to embarrass you. Mm. And because I'm the only person who can protect you, mm. I stood with you. But now mm. you are wrong. Mm -hmm. The way you have handled this, this and this, mm. it is not fair. Mm. And, and you need to see how you challenge that. Wow. And of course, then mm. if what they call push comes to shove, mm. I believe you need to stand with your wife mm. and temporarily disconnect with your siblings until sanity is restored. Because at the end of the day, 
your wife is re you can't replace your wife with anything else and, wow. and that is you, you chose your wife yes. but your brothers you know you mm. you there is nothing that will happen your brothers will always be your brothers whether you talk to them or not because you are connected by blood so eventually blood will bring you together but if you mess with your wife mm. my friend you could live without your wife for the rest of your life wow <laughs> <laughs> But generally, so that we finish this, <laughs> yes. you know, regarding all manner of disputes, it mm. doesn't have to be this. Mm. Just try and minimize and avoid disputes, mm. you know, whether mm. they are coming from mother-in-law yes. or father-in-law or siblings. Yes. Just try your best. Mm. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 14, mm -hmm. pursue peace with all people. Mm. Yes. Pursue peace. And pers mm. pursuit means, it's like peace tends to run away, so you, you pursue it. <laughs> peace is not automatic. Uh -huh. There will be many situations that want to take away peace. Mm. So you need to be in pursuit. Mm. Put effort, mm. run mm. after peace. Mm. Okay? And with all people, of course, and holiness. Yes. The Bible says, without which no one will see the Lord. Mm. The second thing I want to give you in terms of wisdom is, mm. always exercise restraint. Mm. Be a person who has restrained. Mm. Be restrained in your words. Be restrained uh -huh. in your thoughts. Be restrained in the way you speak. Yes. Okay. Be restrained in your feelings mm. and your actions. Mm. In James chapter 1, verse 18 to 20, mm. the Bible says, So then, my beloved brethren, let mm. everyone be swift mm. to hear or to listen, mm. slow to speak, mm -hmm. and slow to wrath or to anger. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says, For the anger of men does mm. not produce the righteousness of God. Wow. So it is important as a person, mm -hmm. and, and this lady who is uh, in, in problems with the mother, with mm. the father, and with the siblings, mm. uh, they need to exercise restraint. Mm. Because even what happens is when there's a dispute and people are not restrained, mm. that's when they say wrong things, they regret. Yes. That's when they uh, do things mm. that they later regret. Mm. And then, of course, finally, it's important for us to be gentle. Mm -hmm. Even when we are talking to people, mm -hmm. uh, we need to be gentle. Mm -hmm. And in Proverbs 15, uh, chapter 1, the Bible says, A soft answer turns mm -hmm. away wrath mm -hmm. or anger, mm -hmm. but a harsh word stirs up anger. Mm -hmm. You see? So in a moment of dispute, yes. you need to look for uh, soft answers. Mm -hmm. When somebody asks you a question, mm -hmm. Just try to answer softly. Don't be hard hitting. Mm. If they throw a tough question, try to soften it. Soften mm. your answer. Mm -hmm. it, the Bible says that, you know, turns away, wow. uh, it turns away wrath. Mm. So, so the dispute will not be escalated mm -hmm. because disputes become dangerous when they are escalated and where it was just, con you know, a normal discussion, mm. it becomes a heated argument. Mm. I once, you know, my wife one time asked me, what's the difference between a conversation and an mm. argument? Mm. I told her it is a level of heat. Mm. <laughs> and mm. she really laughed. Wow. And it is true. Mm. When, when, that's why it's called a heated argument, argument yeah. because there's a heat in there. Mm -hmm. And then Proverbs 25, 15, the mm. Bible says that a patient persistent pierces through indifference mm. and a gentle speech breaks down rigid defenses mm. okay mm. so sometimes why we have disputes is because we are very defensive mm -hmm. and we are very rigid about the things that we experience so so wow. passing in a nutshell i just yes. thought i give wisdom wow. uh, because yes. ideally what we should do is avoid situations where we are disputing so if mm. we can really be if we can just be slow to anger you know slow to speak and quick to listen if we can uh, speak, uh, you know, answer softly, and if we can just uh, be gentle with people, uh, usually that tends to de-escalate, wow. you know, uh, issues of disputes and tensions. Wow, thank you, Bishop, for that wisdom. Uh, what I'm hearing you say, it's, uh, you know, people say that it takes the second party to start or to begin a war. Yes. How you respond to something. Provocation. Yes. yes. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Bishop. Because if somebody comes trying to fight with you and yes. you don't fight, you yeah. don't hit back, yeah, yeah, it yeah, takes yeah. away yeah. the need to escalate that kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. May God help us <laughs> just to build that capacity. Yeah. Like what you've said, just be slow to anger, slow to speak, yeah. and quick to listen to mm -hmm. uh, things. Uh, there is someone here who is asking Bishop, mm. how should uh, a young person deal with uh, number one harsh parents? Um, one, it mm. is important that you respect your parents mm. because uh, you need to understand their expectations yes. 
and also stay away from behavior that mm. agitates them. Mm. When, when you find a harsh parent, yes. uh, the question is, why are they harsh? Mm -hmm. It also could be that they are dealing with problems that they, they themselves are not aware of, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. so, so just forgive them, mm. because your parent is your parent. Yes. And if you find that your parent is very harsh, mm. uh, there could be a reason why they are harsh. Either mm. they have issues they are carrying from their background, mm. or you have repeatedly mm. been a frustration to them. Yes. <laughs> That's why I said, uh, just stay away from behavior that agi say, agitates them. Mm -hmm. I find it difficult to imagine that a parent will just wake up and just decide I'm going to be harsh to you mm. uh, unless they are dealing with their own unresolved issues, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. so, so forgive them. So the first thing, respect them, mm. forgive them, mm -hmm. and then also pray for them. Yes. You, you need to pray for your parents mm. because you never know why they they are going through this maybe mm. they are struggling with issues and where they are going to work mm. or where they doing business life is very hard for mm. them mm -hmm. and then you start you know doing some things they don't expect they don't have time for the nonsense mm. you're trying to do them <laughs> <laughs> so they get very angry and agitated i'm not defending them but i believe uh, Parents, mm. most parents are very loving to their children. Yes. I believe mm. I am a representative of parents. Right. I know once in a mm. while mm. I've been harsh to my boys. Yes. But most of the time I've mm. tried to be a good father, mm -hmm. you know, and kind to them mm. and talk to them nicely. Mm. Don't raise my voice. Mm -hmm. I've tried to do that. Mm. And many times when I've raised my voice, mm -hmm. either because I'm angry yes. and they did something at that moment mm. when I was not mm. in my right mm. senses. Mm. And I, just, it, I was just waiting for a trigger <laughs> to blow up. Yes. So sometimes it's mm. good for, for, mm. for, for children to understand that. Mm. However, if it gets chronic yes. and it's too severe, Mm. then I think a young person needs to wisely seek help mm. from a trusted relative. And I want you to note the word here, trusted. Yeah. Because parents can react very badly uh, if they feel like you are yes. now going to report them mm. either to their sister or mm. to their mm. uncle or to their gra or your grandpa. Mm. It can be very good. Or even our friends mm. who you are parents respect. Mm -hmm. There's a way a child can just go and say, hey, mom, these days it's just, mm -hmm. uh, can you just uh, maybe wisely talk to her and find out mm -hmm. uh, what did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. And there are parents who are kind enough to hear that. Sure. That's a tricky one. Mm -hmm. But I believe there is always someone who can speak to another. Yes. Because I don't believe we should allow mm -hmm. harshness to break the spirit of children mm -hmm. because no one can talk to your parents. Yeah. I believe there should be somebody. Mm -hmm. Even in, in, is, is in this church, mm -hmm. You can come and talk to the pastoral team. Mm. We'll find a way of wisely yeah. engaging your parents to say, look, uh, you, you're losing your child mm. because you're too harsh. Mm. You need to show some love. Wow. Sometimes we struggle because even we ourselves were never shown love. Yes. So we are also leaving out what we got. Mm. We, we think by default that that's how to raise good children, children. by being very harsh and yes. tough. Yes. But yes. that sometimes can be... So mm. don't run away from home mm. because your mom and dad are harsh. Mm -hmm. That won't solve the problem. Mm. Uh, try to be nice. Try to avoid uh, the triggers because you already now know that what is it that you do or don't do that makes your mom and dad, yes. you know, blow up. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> uh -huh. How do you deal with absentee parents? Um... Again, you need to understand that mm. uh, when you find that they are, a parent is not there, mm. uh, they are not absent because they really want to, because we become parents by choice many times. <laughs> we choose to become parents. Yes. And if every, every parent is like me, or most of us are like us, I was mm. really looking forward mm. for my children. Yes. I was looking mm. forward mm -hmm. to you know, raise my children. Mm. And, uh, you know, when, when my wife conceived, I was over the moon. I yes. mean, I was very excited, mm. you know. Mm. And so that tells you that uh, gen as a general rule of thumb, mm. most parents, either mom and dad, mm. are really looking forward to raising their children. Yes. So when you begin to find they are not at home, mm. you need to understand them because the absenteeism could be caused by a matter they are unable to handle themselves mm. or they are just busy trying busy. to look for money yes. and to get you food mm. and things. So the first thing is to understand. Mm. But uh, if, if, if it persists, then wisely mm. 
mm. you know, let them know that you really desire to spend some time with them. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's just good to let them know that, Mom, I missed you. Yes. Yeah, are you still going away again on Saturday? Mm -hmm. You know, when you start talking like that, mm -hmm. or oh, oh, what time are you coming home? Mm -hmm. You know, a, 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 a serious parent will begin to see that I think I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm too much away from my children, mm -hmm. and I need to just give them some time. Okay. You know, and, yeah. and, 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 and so this one, it's difficult because every family is they unique are. in its own way. There are many reasons. Mm. Some parents are away because either both of them or one of them is at war with the other. Mm. And so there are things which are very difficult for you to mitigate as a child. Mm -hmm. So you just have to appreciate that this is, these are the, the tragedies of a fallen world, but mm -hmm. make the best out of it, mm -hmm. understand them, appreciate them, mm -hmm. know that they are struggling with issues that they, they themselves probably need help, mm -hmm. and maybe they are not even aware or mm -hmm. they don't know who can help them. Mm -hmm. Yes. And utilize the opportunities you get. To yes. Spend time with you them. spend time with them. Yes. Yeah, anytime you have an opportunity, mm -hmm. just make the best out of it. But wow. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Bishop. <laughs> this is really uh, helping. Um, the same question, but then they're asking, how, how do you deal with a single parent? Because this is, these are things that are happening. In the yeah. I'm, I'm imagining the person asking is yes. now, mm. a, I don't want to call a victim, yes. because it's not victim. Mm. They, they found themselves at a place whereby they are yes. one parent. Mm. And usually single parentage is for the woman, because woman, women tend to mm -hmm. be the ones who raise children. Mm -hmm. Men don't have the capacity. We have a few single parents who are men, yes. but they are very few. Mm. But not naturally, when you hear a single parent, mm. many times a single parent will be mm -hmm. a, a woman, because yes. a lot of times men give women pregnancy mm. and they go away. Mm -hmm. So they leave them to nurture the child. Mm. So the child grows up knowing that this is my parent, yes. and then eventually Eventually, probably they get to know who their father was mm -hmm. or they may mm -hmm. even never get to know. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I need to tell this person that they should not be ashamed mm -hmm. because God is greater than all our weaknesses, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. the, the ideal situation is that uh, everybody should be parented by two people, mm -hmm. a mother and a father. Yes. But again, because we live in a fallen world, mm -hmm. that's not always possible. Mm -hmm. So when you find yourself here on earth, you know that you are a result of a something beyond Mm. human beings is God who created this natural process mm. of giving birth and being born. Mm. And so you didn't choose how mm -hmm. to be born. So do not be ashamed. Yes. There are some young people who feel ashamed mm. that when everybody is told, okay, stand with your parents, mm. they stand, but now you, you, don't you really have. don't have. And that's what you find in church every time we are doing something mm. and we are requiring some parents. Yes. We always insist that those kids who don't have a parent, mm -hmm. someone else, you know, stands on their behalf. Yes. Yeah, because there are many people who mm. can stand in that gap mm. and, 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 and fill that void. And then, of course, it's important to respect mm. and obey the parent and support the parent you live with. Mm. If you happen to find yourself being brought up by your dad alone, mm. just respect them, obey them, mm -hmm. understand that probably even they themselves were never prepared for that kind of eventuality. Mm -hmm. It happened either... Mm one of the spouses uh, passed on mm. or the marriage just couldn't work mm. or you you you, you the, the, the men that uh, you know are sired you possibly mm. uh, just abandon your mother mm. uh, immediately the, the, they parted ways yes. at the point of conception mm. there are very many situations that arise but mm. the the most important thing is that you are alive today mm -hmm. and god's hand is upon you and you can fulfill God's purposes despite mm. the fact that you are from a single parenthood. Yeah. And of course, it is important for me to say that for uh, those young people growing up mm. in a single parenthood situation, it's good to find a mature person who can provide the parent you miss. Mm. For example, if you are if, if, if you are being brought out by, up by your own father, mm. your father could be having older or younger sisters, mm -hmm. those would be the best to be your mother, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Because again, we don't encourage a situation whereby another woman becomes your mother because then that mm -hmm. could precipitate some problems with your father yes. because yes. then that woman could start getting close and mm -hmm. what was never intended, you know, happens mm -hmm. and you find yourself in a funny situation. Wow. Uh, but where yeah. God leads and directs, mm -hmm. it's still fine because we have also seen situations like that. Mm -hmm. But it's important that uh, you find a mature person mm -hmm. to sit in 
uh, uh, in, in the place of the pattern that you know is not there mm. and some wise ladies do that when they are raising for example a boy mm. and uh, they need a father figure they will approach uh, mm. uh, maybe um, uh, um, either a close friend mm. or an uncle mm. to this boy mm. or one of their you know close relatives mm -hmm. and then uh, they expose them to them and they begin to work with them yes that usually is very helpful mm -hmm. and, and the only thing we need to be careful mm. is that boundaries are not crossed uh -huh. yeah because then uh, it's very easy to develop closeness which mm. precipitates other things that mm -hmm. were not intended mm. but for the person who has grown up and a single parent mm -hmm. just know that god loves you uh, God does not uh, count your worth mm. on uh, your parentage. Mm. He counts your worth on the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross wow. and saved you and shed his precious blood. Mm. Jesus did not say that those who are both parentage mm. will benefit more from mm. his blood mm -hmm. and his death on the cross. We are all recipients Amen. of the same grace. So it is your responsibility mm. to pick up yourself mm. and not allow what didn't work to destroy your life and to compromise you mm. yes wow wow mm. thank you <laughs> thank you so much bishop mm. um in that line bishop uh, of a single parenthood there are single parents who are raising up children and then it happens once the children have succeeded in life mm. then the other party shows up mm. i mean they want to take part and to enjoy you know uh, the successes of their their children so um, this person is asking, should one accept a parent who has never been there and reappears during my success? <laughs> <laughs> you want a piece of... <laughs> yeah, th this is difficult <laughs> yes. because, again, you cannot change or even deny your biological parent. Yeah. That's a reality. <laughs> the fact is, if yes. that was mm. your biological father or mother, yes. uh, whether you jump up <laughs> and down, it doesn't matter what tantrum you throw. Yes. Uh, that is uh, that 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 is that mm. is the reality. Mm. Of course, it's unfortunate that somebody walked away and mm. just appears. I think the spouse that was left with this child is the one that is supposed to manage this situation, mm. so that uh, you uh, don't allow the child to get caught up in the crossfire between these estranged parents. Mm. Uh, it's unfair when uh, I am the one trying to push away my father mm. who walked away from me when my own mother is there. Mm. She, and because they are at the le same level with my father who left or my yes. mother who left, uh, I think they are the ones who should really deal with yes. the issue. Say, listen, mm. you left me with this child. Mm -hmm. uh, I am the one going to determine how Yes. much you've mm. been involved mm -hmm. in this. Mm. I believe there should be that conversation uh, between them. Between them okay? yes. But you, you should be left mm. to choose mm -hmm. because I believe every child must be given a right mm. to choose how they want to relate with mm. a parent like that one. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would say is that uh, such a person should wisely manage the situation and refuse to be manipulated. Mm. Yeah, you can refuse to be manipulated by the opportunistic a yes. parent uh -huh. who has been away mm. and just put your foot down respectively and firmly mm -hmm. and without being disrespectful. Mm. But for me, the ideal situation would be the parent who stayed on yes. and managed the situation mm. should be the one to ensure that uh, you are protected from this other parent who now sees you become great, you are graduating or you've got a job mm -hmm. or you're getting married and they all of a sudden want to come and put away everybody mm. and take all the glory. Mm. I think someone needs to put their foot down and say, listen, yes. we appreciate mm. you, we respect you, mm. you have your place, mm. but kindly, yeah, let's play it within the limits it's supposed to be played. Wow. I think we just need someone bold enough yes. <laughs> to be able to do that. And I believe the spouse that mm. stayed would mm. be the best, mm. or someone else who holds authority over uh -huh. this person yes. should be able to come and say, listen, we mm. appreciate you, mm. we can't deny the fact that you are the father of this child, but uh, there is... Uh, uh, they, they are responsible. I mean, you see, when you abscond responsibility, mm. you can enjoy privilege. Mm. Okay? Yes. So it's good for them to be told your privileges will be limited <laughs> to only siring because you never fathered. There's a difference between siring and fathering. You provided the seed, but you didn't father. Or you, you provided the egg, yes. but you didn't mother. Yes. So you only, we are going to measure your. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, because, Pastor, when you take responsibility, you enjoy privileges, isn't it? Yes. Indeed. So you cannot enjoy privileges where you skived yes, responsibility. responsibility. And someone needs to be bold <laughs> enough and say that. Well, thank you, Bishop. I yes. think, you know, there's something that is even happening in the entire nation. You yeah, know, it is. Someone, sometimes you'll see yeah. uh, in the news, um, you know, someone went away for 50 years. Yeah. And they're coming back and they're saying, you know, uh, I really missed you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Bishop. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, someone is asking, um, what should... Uh, be the Christian response to inheritance wrangles, mm. where there are wrangles in mm. terms of inheritance. Yeah, there are many wrangles these yes. days, mm. and the beauty is, of course, there is law, mm. and the law is quite uh, okay. Yes. Those who want to follow the law, mm. the law is very clear. In fact, um, um, it, it is straightforward, straightforward. And, and that yes. law has been properly developed, it's mm. been applied many times mm -hmm. and they are safe situations mm -hmm. it's important for me to say that inheritance is not a right it's a privilege it's a privilege no 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 i mean it's, 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 it's not a privilege it's a right, it's a right. Mm -hmm. you know inheritance means mm -hmm. i deserve something because i'm connected to you mm -hmm. by blood mm -hmm. so for example i'm born in a family of eight mm -hmm. okay when my father goes away or dies what is left i by law yes i i am supposed to inherit my father yes because I am his son. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my brothers cannot sit and pretend to be favoring me. Yeah. I just stanley <laughs> where uh, because you are born the, yeah. the third fellow yeah, uh, right. that you can settle yeah. there. Yeah. No, no, it's not supposed to be like that. Mm. Uh, I believe people should not relinquish their inheritance simply because they are Rangos. Mm. Uh, Christians, people take advantage of us because we are peaceful. Yes. And sometimes we don't want to raise a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. So our brothers sit somewhere without us. Yes. They divide things and they sign up and they want to force us mm -hmm. to sign. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, we shouldn't just say yes simply because we want peace. Mm -hmm. Because again, uh, we need to stand with truth and justice. Because as a Christian, mm -hmm. you probably might be the only person who will fight for the rights mm -hmm. of all the others who are weak and disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. Because if you find them doing that to you, mm -hmm. it means they could easily swindle everybody mm -hmm. else, yes. you know, if they mm -hmm. can do that. So I think there's a place of putting your foot down and saying, I think there's a way that this thing needs to be done mm -hmm. and we need to follow that. Mm -hmm. I advise that where then such disputes are, seek some legal, you know, counsel mm -hmm. and advice. Mm -hmm. And then let your siblings know exactly what is supposed to happen so that as they do what they want to do mm -hmm. especially if you are not the one in charge of the process mm -hmm. then they know that even as they make mistakes mm -hmm. they have made mistakes knowing that this is the way it is supposed to be yes. of course if it gets nasty and sinful mm -hmm. i believe you can just make your stand clear you tell them ah, okay that's what you've decided i don't agree with you mm -hmm. but uh, if that's what you choose it's fine but mm -hmm. just know and if there's a way you can have it on record mm -hmm. Mm. <laughs> that what you have done is not right. You have yes. disenfranchised me mm -hmm. and probably other people and there are the processes we have not done properly. Mm. It is important to come clear. Don't leave things hazy. Mm. So that because what happens is in, when it comes to succession, uh, there are documents you are pen signatures. Mm. So if you are pen signatures on forged documents mm. and one day something comes up <laughs> yeah. and that uh, somebody you know revisits the matter mm. you know you are culpable mm -hmm. because then how did you append a signature on a mm -hmm. forged document, forged document and you probably knew it mm. you understand that yes. so uh, for the sake of uh, your own life mm -hmm. if things begin to get nasty and sinful it's not good to keep fighting there i believe god can prosper you apart from your parents inheritance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. however it is also not fair for you to go start life from zero when your own father worked hard to build a foundation to mm. make you stand. I can imagine today, for example, mm. Mumo was to inherit me and the mother, mm. and then he disenfranchises Perez. Perez yes. And, you know, mm. he takes everything that we mm. have, all mm. the money, all mm. the properties, mm. and all the savings, mm. and he just leaves him a small drop. 
um, it's, it's, not it's, it's not fair, mm. you know, it's, it's really not fair. So mm. I believe uh, we need to educate people and we ourselves as believers, we also need to be on the forefront to encourage our siblings to learn to be fair. Mm -hmm. In fact, families that care uh, about other, others, I think you have heard of this statement that says that uh, mm. the measure of our society is how it treats its weakest members. Yes. Okay? Yes. You know that you are, you are a strong family when you sit mm. and decide to do well, I mean to, to, to favor or your siblings that are not very well to do. Mm -hmm. But what happens is the opposite. Mm. You find the most well are members of our family want to oppress mm. even those who have nothing. Yes. You know, it is very sad. Wow. And that's what Paul was addressing in 1 mm. Timothy 6, mm -hmm. 6 to 10. It's a hard problem. Mm. He says, now godliness with contentment is great gain. Mm. We need people who are godly and content. Mm. The Bible says we brought nothing into this world and it's certain we shall carry nothing out. Mm. So as people fight over inheritance, it's always important to remember, no matter how much we have unearthed, mm. mm -hmm. we leave everything here, mm. except that which we have sent ahead of us mm -hmm. through giving and supporting the work of God. Mm. That's the only thing, according to Matthew 6, that wow. has been stored for us mm. in heaven, mm. where moths, rust and thieves do not get into mm. anything else that is here no matter how glamorous it is we shall leave it here the bible says verse 8 and having food and clothing with these we shall be content okay mm. but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful as which drown men in destruction and perdition you see mm. apostle here was writing to paul but i mean to timothy mm. but i think was making reference to the church but remember this principle works even for people who are not saved. If mm. you find people that are gluttonous mm. and greedy for land, mm. let me tell you, yeah. they have already fallen into a snare because they are desiring to get rich using even means and methods that are not godly, including disenfranchising others. The Bible says such people mm. are falling into a temptation mm. and they're into a snare and they are going to get into many foolish and harmful mm. lusts. Mm -hmm. Not even now this one for things. You mm -hmm. find them in sexual problems, you find them stealing, you mm -hmm. find them lying, mm -hmm. you find them cutting corners mm -hmm. and corrupting things. And eventually that evil builds up and begin to boil over, destroy their life mm -hmm. and follows their children as well and destroys them. Mm -hmm. And thus you find people once did very well, they end up very poorly. The yeah. kids are drunkards, they are not serious. You know, even the money and the property they took has not helped them. Mm. Okay? Wow. And you find someone who walked away from such a thing, went away, God blessed them. They may not have much land. Mm. They have just a few pieces of land, but they are blessed. Their children are doing well, and they are excelling. It's because the grace of God is upon them. So I would say that um, every, every, every case must be handled in his own merit. Mm. It is you to weigh what's going on, what is the issue, why are you disagreeing, where is the point. But I believe as Christians we must stand for truth and justice, and especially where you find your siblings are actually oppressing others. I think you just need to take a stand and say, I cannot be party to this. My conscience cannot allow me to do this when I see my sisters or my brothers are struggling and wallowing in poverty. Mm. You understand that? Yes. So, so those of us who are well to do and God has helped us, it is even, uh, we should even be the one saying, minimize, when you give them half, give me a third. Wow. So that, you know, my sister, my brother can have something more. Because me, um, I, God has helped me. I have been able to acquire stuff and my own sons will have enough to share between the two of them. Mm. There will be no pressure. Mm. Yes. Well, Bishop, um, allow me just to ask this question. Ask, Maybe ask. you can just give a basic uh, <coughs> reply or some wisdom, and then we can look into it uh, uh, later. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking, isn't it our responsibility as, as Christians in terms of mitigating these wrangles to let our children know what what they will have when we are still alive or should we just leave it to our angles you know once, <laughs> once we are we are gone now they can take care of our children yeah i agree wisdom demands that we find a way of and 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 the best way is to write a will all right okay yeah wills solve these things of course some wills uh, are mm. challenged again yes. because again 
awareness be looked at from also an object, ob objective point of view. There are some of us who write well, we over favor mm. one or some children and we mm. disenfranchise the others. Yes. They have a right to question something like that. And mm. so even as you write well, because your lawyer may not uh, be able to persuade you to do what mm. they, be, they, they don't know why you're doing that. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe like you said, one of the days we could have a panel of lawyers yes. and deal with some of these succession questions mm. and see how do you do that. Mm. So the best thing would be to do that. Mm. Or even um, raise your children in a way that they respect each other and they mm. know that they will care for one another. Mm. Unfortunately, there's just some demon that attacks people. Yes. When you begin to share things of yes, departed yes. relatives yes. and uh, ancestors, mm. you know, we just become greedy. We want to disenfranchise everybody. Mm. Some people just want to have it all and uh, deprive everybody mm. else. The best way would be just to clearly express this in a, in a, in a legal way mm. so that uh, when you are gone, yes. it is clearly known uh, wow. who gets what. Wow. Yes. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. That's a... Uh, uh, thank you for that wisdom. Um, another question from our viewer is, uh, how, how should young people handle parents who reject their boyfriend or girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> um, parents are very wise, yes. and there are things they see. I'm not defending them. Um, yes. But it's, it's good to find out wisely mm what their reasons are. Yes. They may know or see something that you yourself cannot know mm. or see. Mm. So when your parent expresses some doubts, eh, mm. it's good to just take a, a short break eh, yes. and find out. I know this may be difficult. Your mm. father and mother, depending on how free they are with you, mm. they may not, eh, but some are, some are very plain. They'll mm. just tell you, my son, where I looked at your, your mm. girl mm. and there's just something not right about he, her. Mm. Or my daughter, I looked at this boy and there's mm. just something about him. Parents have an intuition. Yes. And, and somebody said that sometimes parents can up to almost 70% choose a spouse for you. Right. Because they know you. Yes. They know mm. what kind of person you are. They mm. brought you up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they can see themselves in you. Yes. So they know the challenges <laughs> that you have. Uh -huh. So that is important. I would advise that you don't throw up your hands in the air and uh, shout at your parents mm. and disappear for eight months mm. and then come back with the, the same girl with a baby. Mm. That may not be the right thing to do. Mm. First of all, understand. Yes. Now, if you are convinced your parents are wrong, because again, parents can also be biased. Maybe they want you to marry a certain daughter from a family. Mm. They know mm. because of their own reasons. Yes. Either they are thinking mm. that family will give them um, some good uh, mm. clout mm -hmm. or, or visibility or social yes. status. Mm. Or if it is a girl, sometimes some um, mm. men want their daughters married in homes where yes. the dowry will really be solid, yes. you know, something good. <laughs> so sometimes mm. there could be some hidden selfish motives mm. and it's unfortunate for parents to do that mm. it will be very unfortunate mm. but if you are convinced that they are wrong politely let them know that you have decided this is a woman you marry mm -hmm. and move on but then be ready to bear the consequences of your decision mm. pray that your marriage works they might even refuse to be part of your wedding. Mm -hmm. Be ready to bear that. Mm -hmm. They might refuse even to give you your inheritance mm -hmm. because I've, I've seen situations like that where people have said, I can't give you my property when you married this kind of a mm -hmm. worthless mm -hmm. girl or worthless mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. And so be ready. Be ready, be ready yes. to bear the consequences. Mm -hmm. And of course, more, most often than not, especially for we brethren, because many times, if you have been praying, you had God. Mm. Uh, the wife God led you to may not be the wife that your parents would be led to. Yes. But you know that I had God. Mm. Uh, God led me to this lady mm -hmm. or God led me to this man and I'm marrying him or her. Then just uh, tell them politely, I hear what you've said. Mm. I have checked. I have interacted with this man, this girl. Mm. And I think she's good and it's the one that I love. Mm. Wise parents will just say, okay, son, we have told you, uh, you are still our son. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, even when things start burning, we won't run away from you. We will still be there for you. Mm. And that's, that's life because mm. God gives us the um, you know, opportunity for choice. God does not uh, even force us. Mm. What God does is he shows us what to do and the consequences of when we do it right and the all the, 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 the benefits of doing mm. what we need to do and the consequences yes. of doing what we shouldn't do. Mm. Yeah. Wow. If today Mumo came with a girl and I have uh, misgivings, mm. I'll be honest with him. I'm mm -hmm. just telling him, son, I've interacted with this girl for a few minutes mm. and um, I pick one, two, three things. Mm. Uh, you know, are you, mm. are you comfortable with this? Yes. And what do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, should you continue this or do you want to take some time? Maybe he insists, Daddy, I've been with this girl for the last five years. Mm -hmm. I know her too well. Mm. Uh, she's good. Um, I say, okay, son, mm. um, this is going to be your wife. Me, I already have mine. Yes. So uh, yeah, you just go ahead. Yeah. We pray for you. We support you. Mm -hmm. We'll be there for you. <laughs> uh, and then when things uh, hit, Hit, hit the roof one day, <laughs> he would just come and say, yeah, dad, you are right. But then it's too late. It's, okay, son, what can we make out of this? Yes. You know, so sometimes it's a very difficult uh, path to follow. Mm -hmm. And it's just good that young people, when they begin this journey, to just walk with the parents and mm. before they escalate things too much. Mm. Yeah, it's just good. Because again, young people, they ambush us. Yes. They come to us when they are ask, coming to ask for the wedding day. Mm -hmm. and, and <laughs> it's good once in a while to, you know, like, you know, when Davis gets ready, yes. it's good to just bring a girl home when, mm. when, when it's too early. Yes. When they have not even, mm -hmm. j or even in church here, you mm -hmm. know, say, Dad, this is my friend. Mm -hmm. And then you begin to see, okay, uh, yeah. is there chemistry? Is there mm -hmm. connection? Mm -hmm. It's important because, you know, marriage is not just about you. It's a communal it's a thing. thing. Mother-in-law, yes. father-in-law, you, your yes. wife, mm. the other siblings and friends and mm. pastors, mm. everybody that is in your circle mm -hmm. is affected by, by the relationship. Wow. Yes. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much, Bishop. That's, that's great. Um, maybe just a last one. I yes. know we can handle this in yeah. a few minutes. Mm. Um, someone is asking, is there hope for people who come from broken, uh, dysfunctional families to have a godly family in their yes, lives? Yes, 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 Pastor. There is hope. Yes. And, and this is because Christ has healed our past and his barriers. Yes. It's important to remember that God doesn't judge us according mm -hmm. to our past. Mm -hmm. And nobody should be imprisoned by the failures of their parents mm -hmm. or of those who have gone ahead of them. Mm -hmm. Definitely there are certain behavioral patterns we pick yes. because of what mm -hmm. environment we have been subjected to mm -hmm. and what we have observed mm -hmm. and what we have heard. Mm -hmm. But it is important to know that the gospel gives us a hope of redemption mm -hmm. and uh, when our hearts are redeemed mm -hmm. then everything about us also can be redeemed to a great extent mm -hmm. the bible says in second corinthians 5 17 therefore if anyone is in christ is a new creation mm -hmm. all things are passed away behold all things have become new mm -hmm. i believe this wasn't just in reference to spiritual things because mm -hmm. once your spirit man changes then everything about your soul and even your body mm -hmm. changes. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of adjustments that take place mm -hmm. when we get you know, born again and we become sons of God. Yes. And our perspectives change, our mm -hmm. hearts are soft. Mm -hmm. Things that made our parents probably fight cannot make us fight because our hearts are insulated mm -hmm. by the love of God, by the fruit of the Spirit, mm -hmm. and by the favor that we get from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then in Romans 6, 4, the Bible says, therefore we were buried with him, O Christ. Yes through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead mm -hmm. by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. So there's newness of life. And this newness of life begins with spiritual redemption. But remember, we are not just born again to, because God also knows that mm -hmm. this newness of life cannot exist in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. It exists in an environment of meeting people, getting married and yes. raising a family. Mm. So in a way, this newness of life permeates mm. even into our families. Wow. And so I believe for this person, there is hope for mm. people who have come from broken families. We have seen people that have come from broken families, mm -hmm. they've gotten married mm. and they have done very well. The mm. only thing you need to watch out is people who come from broken families tend to swing the pendulum to the other side. Uh, 
the if he's a man, for example, he he overloves the wife <laughs> okay. and allows mm -hmm. her to do everything because he believes mm -hmm. that uh, if he does that, he won't yeah. lose her. Uh -huh. You know, and you find yes. again. You just overdo things. Instead mm. of helping someone to really be real, mm. you create an unreal situation. You live with a plastic uh, marriage that does not exist in reality. Mm. And you are hurting, but because you don't want to see what you saw with your parents, mm. then you, <laughs> you, you again then mess up. So just be yourself, believe God, mm -hmm. do the right things and uh, seek help. And, um, you know, just be a Christian in the mm. marriage. Mm. Let your wife be a Christian, <laughs> and as a man be a Christian, mm -hmm. you discover that together you can deal this th do this mm. thing called marriage. Amen. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Bishop, and thank you, our viewers, for uh, just spending time with us and your questions. We really appreciate, and uh, we, we really uh, love you. Thank you so much. We want to bring this uh, program to a close, and so please... Um, Allow me to request Bishop to pray for us as we uh, conclude. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today. We have discussed many, many questions ranging from disputes to um, relating with parents to um, broken families and many things that affect us. Lord, thank you that you're teaching us wonderful truths that will help us. I pray for anyone that has listened to this program and they are grappling with issues that Lord you help them to understand and remember that indeed you're with them and you have taken care of that which concerns them. Lord we bless you, we glorify you. Thank you for this evening. I ask that you be with us and minister to us give us a good night and restful sleep in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen.